I am Dr. Sharjeel and you are watching my YouTube channel. If you like my videos, um, then you should uh, subscribe my channel. Now today, this six years old patient uh, came um, who had history of trauma to the eye, traumatic cataract formation and then traumatic cataract surgery with eye well implantation and anterior hysterectomy done. Post surgery glasses were also prescribed and she was a compliant patient but after a few months patient came with complaints of outward deviation in that eye. They definitely told me that um, she is developing amblyopia due to some reason. When I examined the patient on slit lamp, I found vitreous prolapsed in the anterior chamber and touching the corneal endothelium near the corneal wound. I presented uh, this case as of thalmic sign and uh, strangely no one got that uh, vitreous uh, band which was touching the corneal endothelium. Some called it uh, posterior capsular opacification, uh, IOL decentration, uh, IOL capture, capsular phimosis. Um, they were all right. There was some PCO, some IOL capture, uh, but no one diagnosed the vitreous band touching the cornea. So it's a case of vitreous touch syndrome. It is also known as a vitreous wick syndrome. There was uh, one comment uh, that how to differentiate fakia from pseudo fakia. Well, for that, uh, you should watch uh, one of my uh, hit uh, most watched video fakia, pseudo fakia and a fakia. You can search and watch and your concept will be clear. Now let's come to the main topic. Um, what is vitreous wick syndrome or vitreous touch syndrome? Both names are used as synonyms but uh, sometimes question is asked how to differentiate the two. Well when uh, vitreous prolapse uh, comes uh, into the anterior chamber through pupil and touches uh, the corneal endothelium that is called vitreous touch syndrome like in this case uh, vitreous band a large wide vitreous band is touching the cornea so it's a case of vitreous touch syndrome whereas when the vitreous from the pupil reaches the corneal wound and microscopic breakdown of corneal wound occurs due to vitreous and vitreous incarcerate into that uh, gap that is called vitreous wick syndrome now vitreous wick syndrome you can also call it a later stage of vitreous touch syndrome it was very common in the era of intracapsular cataract surgery in the past and then become rarer in extracapsular cataract uh, incision or small incision cataract surgery and phaco surgery but again it is becoming common uh, because uh, earlier it was assumed that uh, vitreous wick syndrome occurs due to anterior uh, uh, segment surgeries but now we have evidence that uh, post pars plana vitrectomies and intravitreal uh, injections uh, they also cause vitreous wick syndrome so now to summarize, it can occur in a routine cataract surgery with unrecognized posterior capsular rent with anterior vitreous prolapse and adhesion to the surgical wound. It can occur due to post-traumatic cataract surgery like in our case or other complicated cataract surgery with recognized posterior capsular rupture but inadequate anterior vitrectomy. It can occur uh, after intravitreal injections, uh, sutureless pars, plana vitrectomies, uh, inadequate anterior vitrectomies in corneoscleral tears. So these are the surgeries uh, 
<coughs> or trauma after which it can occur in our patient cedal was negative and corneal wound was intact so you can call it a vitreous touch syndrome when microscopic wound breakdown occurs it is point of no return and then it is truly called vitreous weak syndrome patients present with decrease of vision due to irvin gauss syndrome cystoid macular edema and can also present with painful decrease of vision with end of thalmitis in our patient uh, mm, there uh, was some endothelial decompensation so urgent uh, complete anterior vitrectomy is required uh, before uh, it can convert into full blown vitreous wick syndrome the other important differential is a capsular uh, tag fortunately i also received uh, a capsular tag uh, a patient uh, two days ago so i have also shown you the second uh, patient uh, with a peaked uh, irregular pupil um, that uh, a capsular tag is touching the cornea so in both cases uh, you have to cut that uh, you have to cut the capsular tag as well as uh, you have to cut the vitreous band and the traction on the pupil subsides for vitreous bands uh, you can also try yag laser vitreolysis and if that is not successful uh, like uh, in our patient uh, there is a large band wide band then you can do it surgically with vena scissors it can be excised or intracamerally with vitrectomy cutter do anterior vitrectomy patiently put uh, put injection myocal to constrict the pupil and um, put uh, air bubble to confirm that anterior chamber is free of any vitreous remnants um, treat is tied macular edema medically with topical uh, ansets um, and that's how you treat uh, vitreous uh, uh, touch syndrome um, in a vitreous weak syndrome if there is a wound gap you can suture it uh, after removing the traction of the vitreous um, whereas in a uh, capsular tag uh, you can just cut it uh, with a vena scissor uh, and uh, nothing else uh, should be required so i hope after watching uh, this uh, video you will be able to recognize vitreous touch vitreous weak syndrome as well as uh, capsular tag uh, incarceration thank you very much